Dear subscribers, I wanted to show you another selection of stories that you sent me or shared in the comments for your consideration. Some people look for plausibility in them or try to explain them from a scientific and technical perspective, others believe in their authenticity and share similar stories. Regardless, I believe we haven't even studied 10% of what's around us. Story 1. There have also been supernatural incidents in our house. We bought a house outside the city and spent a long time renovating it, but when we moved, strange things started happening there. One day I woke up and looked at the ceiling, and it was covered in little black crumbs, not dots, but like flies. I washed the ceiling and the next day the same thing, I cleaned everything again and again the third day. That day, I was standing in the nursery. From the corner of my eye, I saw someone standing on tiptoes at the door of the opposite room, with a long tail raised to the top. He was dark all over and short in stature. I could not move away from the fear and at night my mother came to bless all the corners and read prayers. He said you can go to the second floor by yourself tomorrow. So that night my son didn't rest on the second floor. Someone sat on his feet and he couldn't get up. I personally blessed the corner on the second floor, recited prayers, and seemed to calm down, but a little. Mom said take your chocolate cake out of the apartment, obviously people here don't want you. She did so, walked to the old apartment, opened her bag and said brownie daddy, brownie mama, come live with me three times. It all disappeared and no one bothers me to this day. Story 2 When I was younger, I was dating a guy and I sensed something wasn't right with him. He was very aggressive. Then I had a dream, a dirty, gray day. I walked barefoot through the mud and came home to my grandfather standing, I never saw him in person. I went to the bathroom to wash my feet and my grandfather made sure I put my feet wash it off and don't bring dirt into the house. After a while I found out this guy was in jail for fraud. My mom and I were surprised that grandpa came so I wouldn't get in trouble and bring dirt with me. Story 3 Baffling? I'll throw in my two cents. So that unnecessary problems do not arise. I do not drink, smoke, use drugs. I do not complain about my memory. I remember many things even from early childhood. But what happened then? and three things that occasionally happen later. It was the end of the 1995 school season-ish, and I had been making my annual trip to the village to visit my grandmother over the summer, even though the air was crisp and you couldn't see the faces of those schools. But as always, there are fly in the ointment, you still have to get to the village and leave something behind. Then we either took a bus that smelled of diesel and dust, gas chambers, or a car wash station like VAZ 2101 that smelled of gasoline and cheap cologne. Well, back then I didn't like cars and smelly drivers and wouldn't open the windows even in the summer. I felt seasick, my balance was impaired, my legs felt like cotton and if I was in the car for a day, and that happened, I would have to be pulled out of the car and I would spit out gasoline. This is where it all begins. The school year is over and it's the beginning of June, I don't care, I get in the car and head towards the village. After seven hours, I was finally taken to the village. Feeling very seasick, I walked on my weak legs through the door and towards my beloved grandmother and my favorite fishing rod, which stood outside the door as usual at the entrance. Everything went as usual. I woke up after the transfer and even felt a little nauseous. I walked into the hallway and pulled out my fishing rod, it looked intact. Let's go fishing. Sudden. Well, why are you up? Go! I have to go to school tomorrow. Why are you making such a joke? It's early June, oh my god. When is the beginning of June? Today is August 29th. We just arrived, right? No, he's kidding. I'm standing on the porch with an unassembled fishing rod in my hand, just like I did when I came to the village, 
my car is still having trouble and it stinks of clothes. I have to go back. I was so creeped out when I saw this. I didn't even enter the house. Like this? I automatically walked towards the car and it was indeed the same car and I was on the verge of hysterics, well, who wouldn't panic? The grass was cut, the gardens were dug, the potatoes were bagged, the zucchini, pumpkins were piled. They packed everything into the car. When did all this grow? And since I didn't rest at all after getting off the bus and then took the bus back to the city, I got off the bus inexplicably at night. I felt nauseous all night and had a headache when I got online in the morning. I remember that before I went to the village in early June, I had not eaten anything in the morning. Starting at the end of August I was basically sick of petrol and car fumes, smoke and tobacco smoke all night long so I almost died there after standing in line. Question where have you been these three months? Where was I and who was there in my place? It's still creepy to think about it now. Story 4 My grandmother was somewhat of a therapist, she didn't teach me this, and while she said I was capable, she didn't want me to carry the heavy burden of being a therapist. Many people come to see her, including people from the city, wives of big bosses, and ordinary people. One summer I came to her village, and in front of my grandma there was a woman kneeling and crying, and she was so well dressed. It was obvious that her wife was very big, and the car was parked, Volga, then this is a sign of prosperity. Well, I was curious, like all kids, when I was 11 to 12 years old. It turned out that her daughter had wet ulcers all over her body. Doctors tried to treat her endlessly, but they couldn't cure it. Grandma asked her to leave first, but when she heard someone died somewhere, she asked him to come to her immediately and not waste time. Let her bring the scab from the largest sore on the child's body, and it will soon come to her, for someone's death is near. About a week later, the woman came again a neighbor of their home had died. Grandma took off the scab on the ulcer, wrapped it in red cloth, burned it with some spells, then wrapped the ashes in black cloth and gave it to the woman to put it quietly in the coffin of the deceased, but not in a conspicuous place place, but at the feet. I saw it all and remembered it, which was fun. About two weeks later, the woman came again and brought grandma money and a bunch of gifts. She took off a gold ring from her finger and gave it to grandma, but grandma only accepted the gift and refused the money and ring saying that she cannot take money, otherwise he will immediately forget everything he has learned. It turned out that from the third day after the funeral, her daughter's ulcer began to be difficult to heal. The crust peeled off right before our eyes, the wet flakes disappearing. The skin where those wounds were was clean, just slightly red, as if pus had never drained. But I never learned this and don't know how my grandma did it. Here are some unusual cases. Story 5 I don't like the word mysticism. Rather, I acknowledge that that world is temporarily close to us, beyond our comprehension, and that is God's plan. Many inexplicable things happen to me. I'll tell you a case. My husband was on the plane and he had a contract 6 to 6. We always communicated via Viber, but then he disappeared. He didn't come in. I'm not particularly worried, maybe there's no network, no internet. I had a vivid dream, my husband, so young and handsome, said to me, I am leaving you. There is true love. Suddenly my son appeared in the dream. He passed away a year and a half ago, and in his trench coat he looked fine, alive. And he said, don't go, dad. This is going to be hard for mom. I woke up and everything was clear to me. I wrote to my husband on Viber, where have you been? There was silence in the response. Two days later I got a call, I didn't recognize my husband's voice. He has read my message. He remained silent. Then he said, Dennis brought me back. It turned out that he had a serious heart disease, 
and they couldn't do anything. He already felt that he was leaving. When he saw his son, he shook his head and said, No. Story 6 When my son died, he had a younger son. A very long-awaited child. The son knew that he was leaving and was worried that the child would forget him because of his age. This is his pain. That's what the daughter-in-law said, even though she didn't believe anything. In the evening, the two went home from a relative's house. The road is along the highway. The child was sleeping in the seat and she was driving. We entered an area where road repairs were being done and the road was fenced off by construction bollards. Then a taxi flew over a small slope without slowing down. It flew to the side where the baby was sleeping. It all happened in an instant a huge force grabbed the steering wheel, sending the car swerving between building pillars. The taxi flew very close. The daughter-in-law was hysterical. She got out of the car and said there was no way in her life she would be trapped like this between these pillars. And the strength is indescribable, my deceased son drove the car very well. My daughter-in-law said this, I have a feeling Dennis saved his child. Story 7 I have a similar situation. I had less than three years of driving experience at that time. At that time, my husband had been dead for 3.5 years. I was driving on inner-city highways like everyone else, doing 100 to 110 kilometers per hour. The road there has two lanes, two lanes. I was driving on the left and suddenly the car in front slowed down and stopped, and without a turn signal, it decided to turn left. And speed. With nowhere to go, suddenly my mind raced on how to react. And most importantly, like you, where does the strength in your hands and the confidence to act come from? I turned right, made a sharp left, and was back in the driveway. And there's no slowing down. If I slowed down, I would fly into the ditch like a white swan. The tires squealed like this on the asphalt. I immediately realized that this somersault was not done by me, I couldn't do it, I would be confused. My Seriosa saved me. Story 8 This is how people become believers, a former prisoner told me a story. He was on duty at the military camp and someone stole his tiles. He said this was a huge mistake because tea was also brewed on the stove and overall it was irreplaceable. He knew he would be killed for losing the tile. They had just built a prayer house in their colony. He went there and turned to the cheerful Nicholas, Saint Nicholas, help. So when they had, I don't know what its correct name was, like a general building, an acquaintance from another military camp said to him, don't you need tiles? They gave it to us today, but we already have it. So he escaped the beating and became a believer. What I mean is this, the Lord brings people to him in different ways, some like that prisoner, some like this, mysterious, indicating that there are evil forces and only prayer can protect them. The path is different, but the result is the same people no longer think of themselves as the omnipotent kings of nature, but humble themselves in the face of the unknown and incomprehensible. Well, then, someone will delve into mysticism, Someone will hear his call, understand and come to God. May God help everyone. Story 9 I believe. Amazing worker Nicola helped my husband and I. The situation was that due to my husband's health it was necessary to move to another area. In 1998 there was another crisis, our apartment could not be sold and we had no savings. I came to the temple and stood in front of the miracle craftsman, with tears coming from my eyes, I told him everything, why we needed to sell, why we should leave, and a day later our friend Yura called and asked, have we seen the house? We looked at it and I said, no use, the apartment was like a stake, they heard, make a deal, I'll buy it. Then our friend sent us several million, and after we bought the house, our apartment was officially sold. These are friends and help from miracle workers. Thank you Lord for everything. 
Yura unfortunately left us. May he rest in peace in heaven. I pray for him every day and thank him for everything he did. Sorry, I really want to tell you a miracle. Thank you author, you touched the soul. I wish you all the best. Story 10 Something strange happened to me too. I was about 8 years old and I was on vacation in Sochi with my mother. Mom lay on the beach and I went swimming. I don't remember how I swam very far from the shore, it seemed like the waves took me further. At some point I felt like I was falling and I couldn't feel the bottom with my feet. I thought that was it, that I was going to drown. Suddenly, something seemed to pull me out of the water and push me toward the shore. This is the price per person since there is no one nearby. I don't even understand how I was saved. Story 11 My son is 13 and he hates tying his shoes, they are always dangling. One day I was walking along the sidewalk past the house next door to ours, and all of a sudden I decided to tie my shoes, sit down, and tie them. At this moment, a gust of wind blew away a huge slate on the fifth floor, and the slate fell next to the child. If he hadn't sat down to tie his shoes, the brick would have collapsed on him. It must be said that he never tied his shoes before or after. Now he's almost 16, and he just doesn't wear shoes with laces. Case 8 When I was 11, we were living in Central Asia, and my father, a geologist, was on academic leave to defend his thesis, so in April, instead of going on his usual adventures, he was at home. In May, he said, let's go to the mountains, where there are mushrooms, fresh air and beautiful scenery. Oh, I'm so happy. We decided to go somewhere far away and maybe spend the night by the fire. We walked a long way, found a lot of mushrooms, got water from the spring, met shepherds and treated them to dried fruits and they gave us dried suet. We walked and walked, and dad found that we were lost. We find ourselves in a place where our father is a complete stranger. Well, the mountain is a landmark, so we need to look for the goat trail. But they were not there, I noticed that dad was scared, suddenly we saw the light of the welding machine, dad said, let's go. In 1971, battery-operated flashlights, led us toward the light that keeps moving away from us. We walked out to the path and continued to collect more mushrooms, white button mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms, other mushrooms didn't grow there. We stopped to rest and the light stopped. We got up and continued walking. The sun had set and the light was still looming in front of us. Suddenly, the light started spinning in circles. Dad was silent and thinking very intently. Let's go. We entered a very narrow crack in the rock. Go ahead. Light is ahead. We walked for a long time through the crevice before we came to the valley. The light forms a circle in the valley. We went to a small hill and a car from our geology department came, and Svet disappeared. We are home. While driving, they put me on the car seat, and my father sat next to the driver and talked. I listened, and the words came to my ears, this place is blocked, how can you get there, and take you with me? Daughter. Seven years ago, mountain rescuers moved MVA's team, I don't remember his last name, from there with a helicopter from O. Is the crack passable? At home, my dad told me very sternly to never tell anyone about the fact that we saw a light that looked like welding, 